Today, we will be going through the steps on how to install the Cartographer 3D Probe into the Creality K1 series machines. This process is not only easy, but it really opens up the doors to possibilities for your Creality K1 series printer. All the instructions for this setup will be done using Ubuntu. I know the majority of you are going to be using Windows, but don't stress about it. This is incredibly easy to do. I have another video where I go through the process of how to create a live image for operating systems such as Ubuntu. It's incredibly easy and straightforward, and realistically, anybody could do it, so don't stress about it. If you need this live image, then feel free to pause this video. I'll have a link in the description to the other video. Follow that walkthrough and then come back here once you have your live image of Ubuntu. In the box, we have our probe, a USB cable, and a few other things. In these first steps, it's important to make sure that your USB cable is pinned correctly to the probe. On the Simple AF page, there is an image showing you the correct pinout for the probe. I'm gonna skip this step since this USB is already pinned correctly. But before you do anything or plug this in, make sure that the pinout on your USB to the probe is correct to the image on the Simple AF wiki. Now that we have the probe plugged into the computer, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through the steps to flashing the firmware on the probe. The links for this GitHub are going to be listed in the description. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go to the flashing section for the cartographer. This section is on the right side of the GitHub. Once we're at the flashing section of the wiki, you'll notice the image at the top. This is the image I was talking about that shows you the correct pinout for the USB on the probe. The first thing we need to do at this point is open a new terminal. All you have to do to do that is you hit your Windows key and then start typing in terminal. You'll see an option for terminal and then hit enter and then open up that terminal. First, we need to copy the dependencies from the code block and then drop those into our terminal. This is going to install the dependencies required for us to flash our firmware. Once you drop these dependencies into the terminal, it's gonna do a few things and then stop and give you a yes or no. We wanna tell it yes and then continue on. Once it's stopped, you'll see the terminal prompt has come back and everything's ready for the next step. This next step, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna copy the code block to install Clipper onto the machine. All you have to do is hit the code block copy button, right click in your terminal, hit paste, and then hit enter. Once that's done, you'll get a new prompt and we'll move on to the next step. Now that we've set up the environment, we're gonna go ahead and enable the bootloader on the probe. So again, just like before, copy the code from the code block and drop it directly into your terminal. Once you're done, you should see at the very bottom of the terminal that it has said entering bootloader. Now that the bootloader is enabled, the last step for flashing is just copy the code block for flashing the probe. We'll drop that in and it should flash. And at the end, you should see some information about the probe itself. At this point, we can go ahead and unplug the probe and the USB cable from the computer and begin installing it into the K1. Once we have it installed in the K1, we'll come back to Ubuntu and finish the setup process for Simple AF. Now that we have our firmware installed onto the probe, we can go ahead and install the probe onto the printer. This process is incredibly easy. It takes almost no time at all. When installing the probe, we won't be using the screws that came with the probe itself. I found during testing that these screws are a little too thick at the head and what ends up happening is the probe hits the purge line when the tool head's moving back and forth. So instead, we're going to be using a 2.0 by five millimeter flathead. Now these screws, unfortunately, are hard to find in singles. So I had to buy a full pack to get it. The good thing is this pack's not expensive and it doesn't hurt to have a few extra screws just laying around for future projects. In the extras box that you get from Creality, you'll have a few screws in a little plastic pack right here. We're gonna use these screws to mount the probe onto the side of the tool head. Now keep in mind, it is highly recommended that the mount for this probe be printed in a high temperature resistant filament, such as nylon. Now somebody has asked me if I could print one of these and send it to them. But while I can't, today's sponsor, PCBWay, can. PCBWay's 3D printing service offers a wide variety of filament types to choose from, as well as engineering grade filaments and even metal 3D printing. PCBWay's easy to use 3D printing service is perfect for anybody who is looking to have a custom 3D printed part manufactured for them. Not only do they do 3D printing, but they offer other services as well, such as sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining, and even custom produced PCBs. So if you have a project or need a custom part manufactured, check out today's sponsor, PCBWay. The link is in the description below at pcbway.com. 
To install the probe onto the tool head, all we need to do is slide it in between the belts and the rails. And then once you rotate it, you can index it onto the knobs that's for the LiDAR and then screw it into the side of the tool head. Again, these screws are included in the box from Creality for your extras. In this video, I won't be showing how to route the USB cable through the rear channel to the bottom of the printer. The USB cable provided in the box doesn't really have the shielding required to run through, and the EMI from the printer is just a little bit too much. If you want to run a cable through the rear channel to the bottom of the MCU, make sure that you get a heavily shielded cable, as the included one just doesn't cut it. I already have a few clips installed on the drag chain from a previous probe that was installed in the machine. So all I'm going to do is pop the USB cable into these clips. Once I install the USB cable into these clips, I'm going to take a few zip ties, one at the front and one right at the back, just to secure the cable a little bit more. Make sure those are tight and then snip the ends off of them. Once we have the probe installed onto the tool head, we can go ahead and power up the machine and leave it alone. At this point, we'll step away and go back to our computer so we can install the firmware onto the printer. We need to make sure that we enable root access on the printer. If you haven't already done this or don't know how, the way you get to this is go to settings in the interface and then scroll down until you find root account info. Once you're there, it's gonna give you a 30 second countdown, a bunch of jargon, and then an agree and an okay. Once this 30 second countdown is done, you can hit agree, then okay, and it should show the password for the root account on the printer. Now again, we'll go ahead and hit the Windows key or the Super key and start typing in terminal to open up a new terminal window. The first thing we need to do is SSH into the printer. This will give us a direct connection from our terminal to the printer so we can begin installing firmware. The way you do this is SSH space root at the IP address of the printer and then the password will be Creality underscore 2023. Now that we have access to the printer, we're going to go ahead and copy our first code block into the terminal. The code block you're going to be looking for is the factory reset. Once you find that, you can just copy that and drop that into the terminal. And don't close this terminal, just leave it alone. What you're looking for is for the display to come back up fully on the K1 series machine before you proceed with restarting the terminal. Once the interface is fully loaded on the printer, you can go ahead and hit Control C. If that doesn't work, just close the terminal and reopen it for a fresh terminal and re-SSH into the machine. You may see an update or an action request on the printer. Just go ahead and hit cancel and ignore that. You don't need to do that since we're going to be installing custom firmware in the first place. Now we're going to SSH back into the printer. And again, the way you do this is SSH space root at the IP address of the printer, and then the password will be Creality underscore 2023. Now that we've SSH back in, the next code block that you're looking for is clone the repo. We'll just copy this code block and drop it straight into the terminal. Once it's done pulling the repository, you'll see that the terminal prompt now says sync. Just hit enter and we'll go to the next step. The next section you're going to be looking for is called run the installer. For this section, all we want to do is triple click on the little code snippet. We'll right click, copy, and then paste that into our terminal. This part might take a little bit to complete. So at this point, just leave the terminal alone while it's doing its job. Now this is complete, it's very important that you stop and make sure that you flip the power switch on the back of the unit. You want to leave this off for a second or two and then turn it back on to make sure that the machine comes back up from a full power down. Once the machine's powered back on, we can move on to the next steps. And at this point, you should be done with your live image and can move to whatever operating system that you want to use. Now that Simple AF is installed on the machine, we can go ahead and start calibrating our probe. I highly recommend that you use a mobile device so you can be near the printer as you're doing this process. For this, all you need to do is open up a web browser and enter the IP address of the machine, and it should open up Fluid. Once you're in Fluid, you want to scroll down to the Macros section. I've created a macro that will help you calibrate the Cartographer 3D, and it's now included in Simple AF. So once you're to the macro section, just hit the Calibrate Cartographer macro, and it will open up a dialog menu that will walk you through calibrating the probe. Just make sure you take the time to read the dialog windows through the process, and you should have absolutely no problem calibrating the probe. So we'll go ahead right here and start with step one. You'll notice once you click step one and begin homing the printer that the dialog window upon completion will reopen. This macro is designed to completely walk you through the process of calibrating your probe. So now we'll move on to step two. In step two, it tells us that we need to close the dialog window and then go up to our tool section and enable force move. 
Now, force move is not the safest tool to be using with your 3D printer, so it's very important to pay very close attention while using force move. What we want to do is slowly move the bed until it's two millimeters away from the nozzle, and then we'll return back to the cartographer calibration macro. Even though I know the bed is further away and I can make the moves in a larger movement, I'm using shorter presses to make sure that we don't accidentally damage anything. Because if you run the bed into the tool head, you run a high risk of actually damaging your printer. So don't be impatient. Use a shorter move to move the bed towards the tool head. And now that we have the nozzle two millimeters away from the bed, we can return back to the Calibrate Cartographer macro. Step three for probing the nozzle is going to open up another dialog window. So we can slowly step down the nozzle just like we do with any normal paper or feeler gauge test. This will give us the initial offset that we need for our Cartographer 3D. Make sure before you hit accept that you remove the paper or anything you were using to set the offset away from the probe and just let the printer do its thing. Once the probe is completed taking its measurements, a new dialog window will open, giving you the option to finish. Pressing finish will save these changes and restart the machine. Once the machine is restarted, we want to go back to our macro section and hit calibrate cartographer again to go on to the next step. Keep in mind, there is a 20 second delay for the printer saving sequence. This is to make sure that nothing's happening in the background before saving initializes and the machine's restarted. The last two steps of the calibration are mostly hands off. So just follow the prompts and make sure to read everything as you go along. It's still a good idea to remain close to the printer in case something happens, you're ready to turn it off. So let's move on to the last two steps so we can finish calibrating our Cartographer 3D. During this process, your dialog window is going to disappear, but don't do anything. Just let the calibration do its thing, and eventually the dialog window will reappear, telling you the next steps. During this process, it's very important that you just leave your printer alone. This process might take a while, but just let it complete and wait for the dialog windows to come back. Now that step four is completed, our dialog window has returned, telling us that we could finish this portion of the calibration. And again, what this is going to do is this is going to save the calibration and restart the machine. Once the machine restarts, we'll finish the last step of our calibration for our probe. Now that the printer's restarted, we've opened up our calibration macro again, and we can complete the last step of our calibration. Step five will be the last step, so we can go ahead and hit that and just follow the dialog windows as they come up. Now that the dialog window has returned, you'll see that we have the option to finish. Once we press finish, we're completely done calibrating the cartographer 3D. This again will save and restart the machine. Before you start printing, there's one very important thing that you wanna make sure that you do. Go down to the macro sections and you'll see another macro that I've created called Quick Start. Read this macro. What it's going to do is make sure that it goes through all the basic calibrations that you need for your PID for both your nozzle and your bed, as well as input shaping before you can begin printing. The calibration for these items aren't set by default, so it is very important that you run the Quick Start before you attempt printing your first print. <laughs> For Cartographer 3D, there are two methods of which the probe can be used with the machine. The first and the default method would be touch, and the second method would be scan. The difference being that scan mode doesn't use the nozzle to tap the bed to dynamically set your offset. You set this offset yourself, and there are different models that can be loaded depending on the different variations of printing that you'll be doing. To enable scan mode, you first need to go into the cartotouch.cfg and change the calibration method from touch to scan. Once you've done this, all you need to do is save the changes and restart the machine. Now that the printer's back on, we'll go back to the cartographer scan macro and run the first step. And the first step, just like before, would be homing the X and Y on the 3D printer. Now that we've homed the print head, we need to force move the bed two millimeters away from the nozzle. Now that that's complete, we'll go to step three, calibrate probe. The details of scan mode are a little bit more in depth. If you would like to learn more, go to the notes section of the cartographer scan macro to find out more. My personal preference of these two is scan mode, but this is a preference. I personally like to set my offset myself depending on what I'm doing.
With this setup guide, you should have no issues getting the Cartographer 3D probe installed into your K1 series machines. Remember, if you do have any issues or encounter something you need help with, feel free to jump into the Simple AF Discord or even the Cartographer 3D Discord. There are plenty of people in the community willing to help somebody who needs a hand. And with that, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment or subscribe.